Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions. And here today to help me wake the world up to what's possible for healing are some of the authors of a new book that we have coming out. This one is called Dreaming with Bees, Sacred Medicine from Beyond the Veil of Grief. Oh my goodness, you guys, dreaming with bees. There's a huge thank you that needs to go out to our lead author, Daisha Allred Bond. Before I introduce these authors to you, Daisha, you had a really big mission and a beautiful, beautiful vision of bringing your bee sisters together with you to create this gorgeous book. And I'm so grateful and so honored to be here um, interviewing two of your authors today and being here with you on this journey. So we have Elizabeth Devon with us. She's a licensed psychotherapist and coach helping women heal trauma and relationship patterns with somatic science and a divine feminine twist. And Jill Gigi Austin is the owner of Growth Flows. She helps visionaries transform their leadership style and move towards self-mastery. Um, all right, ladies, Elizabeth, you're going to start the party off today. Tell us about this beautiful chapter that you wrote. Gosh, Laura, thank you so, so much. And always a big thank you to Daisha too. Yeah. So my chapter, of course, the biggest thing that I teach in my platforms is about relationships. And I really wanted to get more vulnerable than I've really gotten on my platform so far about my struggles and relationships and normal, normally people come to me for help in their romantic relationships and their traumas, but I, something not talked about very often is friendships and adult friendships and how do we make friendships in, a, in a, as an adulthood. <clears throat> and so I wanted to talk about my struggles with adult friendships and how hard that was for me to really find soul friendships. And so I, in this chapter, I walked through my struggles with that growing up and not to give too much away, of course, but um, yeah, kind of really walked through my biggest um, valley in adult friendships and friendships that I thought I found and just, just my struggles with that. And, and through the years, how I found a way to really have great friendships in adulthood, right? Because I think at least for me and maybe for a lot of people, it feels a lot easier to make friendships when you're young, certainly when you're in elementary school and even high school and even college, it felt so much easier, but in, it, we evolve so much as adults and we're busy, we have lives. So how, but we still crave that and we still need that as just to be part of a healthy whole person. So I really went through my way of how I, how I was able to find really solid friendships in adulthood and how hard that can actually be. And, and maybe it's not talked about enough. Oh, for sure. Um, and I'm so happy that you are, <laughs> that you're talking about it and that we're having this conversation. And I think it's, it can be surprising. And of course, you guys, this, this, this book, Sacred Medicine from Beyond the Veil of Grief going to tie it into what Elizabeth is talking about. Sometimes it's surprising to feel grief over the loss of a friendship. And like you were saying, it's not just relationships with a partner or a lover. It could be a friend. I love how you said soul friend. What's the most important piece that you want people to understand about that grief? Mm. That it's, that it's just as big. You know, again, something perhaps not talked about enough is our need for deep friendships and partnerships are amazing and they are so needed for our general health and happiness too. But as may perhaps, perhaps, especially for women, those deep soul friendships are so vital and so important. And so what I want people to know is that hopefully just to extend some validation over heartache and heartbreak over friendships. And it can be just as big, if not bigger than any other grief that you've been through, because those connections are so vital to us. So it, the grief is very big, very profound. And as I go through in my chapter, very scarring, um, but can of course lead the way for the best medicine that we've had as, as you'll see in my chapter, but the grief is big and that's okay. 
So I've watched um, myself and some, uh, I'll say older people around me. Um, I have watched them struggle making new friendships later in life. What's your best one tip if someone's listening and they're like, yeah, I can't do it. Like it's not happening for me. I don't know how to do it. I don't know why I try, I try, but it's still not. What's your one, one best tip for that? The first thing that comes to mind, and hopefully this can be easy enough, but here's exactly what I did to help me attract what I have now as my, my absolute soul sisters in my life is how do I become that for myself first? Because I realized that I was reaching too far outside myself and I really have been a chameleon recoverer. So I would chameleon myself and shape shift to form what everybody else, what I thought that they wanted, especially in friendships, because in adult friendships, I've had a very anxious kind of attachment. So I started taking, I started thinking what kind of trips do I want to take with girlfriends? So I started taking myself on those trips and it is amazing what I started to find in about a year's time of doing that, of being my own best friend and kind of dating myself as a friend. Um, you start to attract more line people in your life. And that's exactly what happened for me. I love that so much. Thank you for sharing yes, that, Elizabeth. Yes. Thank you also just for saying yes to this project. And thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. All right, Jill, let's hear about your amazing chapter. Yes. So just echoing Elizabeth, just great. Thanks, Laura, to you for providing this platform to tell our brave words. And of course, to Daisha for inviting us all in and talking about a friendship community, the bees, the dreaming with bees community is she has created such an amazing community. Um, so yes, for me, speaking of recovering, as Elizabeth used that word, I have referred to myself as a recovering yangster. It's a pun. It's a play on the word yang, which is sort of those qualities that we uh, stereotype the, the masculine with that drive, that relentless drive, that big boss. And for me, in my career, I have found that my relentless achiever brought me great success, but it became the boss of me. And, and it, I felt as if I actually lost a part of me. So the grief that I described was about losing that softer, creative side of myself in sacrifice to what my, my relentless achiever felt was necessary to succeed in the world, especially in business. So that is the, that's sort of the setup for the chapter that I wrote. Oh, such juicy topics today. I love these. You got this book and it's so much more than a book. I'm just talking to our listeners today. You're going to find these very real and vulnerable stories that these ladies have shared, but then they're stepping up as master teachers and they're going to help you with an experience, right? To move um, toward maybe one of your dreams or goals. So I love that topic. And I'm thinking, okay, you're in the middle of that situation and you're reading Jill's chapter and it's like, all right, I need to wake up now and do something about it. What would you say is the thing to do? What a great question. Um, I love that question because so often in my life, I found that if I just pounded through it or if I just thought about it enough, something would change for me, <laughs> right? For me, it really takes something different. It takes a pause, an energetic shift. It takes an awareness of what's going on around me. And it can be very simple pause and breathing that allows me to be present with something's really going on here. And I also wanted to say that I think what I discovered, and this is why I was so passionate about writing this, is I wanted to share this discovery with other people because I found out through studies of things like uh, self-compassion that there's a actually a, chemi a body chemical component to this drive and relentless achiever. It's actually a what they call a dopamine loop. And so I was like, oh, I don't have to blame myself. I don't have to criticize myself for this relentless achiever anymore. I can really appreciate what I have achieved and I can pause and I can use something like self-compassion to help me be in the present and transform that drive into a, a thoughtful 
actor action person who knows how to use discernment on how we use our energy. So instead of having to give my all on everything and make it as hard as absolutely possible, does that sound familiar people out there? <laughs> this is a way of really balancing and recovering my yin, my yin side, my creative side, my, cre my, my softer feminine side, and then joining the two together to be whole. Okay, so I'm imagining that what you just said is part of the answer to this question about, you know, how does soft show up for Jill? You just explained a little bit of the compassion piece and how you go at the awareness. How else do you, sh how does that look like if I had, a, if I was a fly on your wall? Yes, another great question. Well, the soft side of me shows up in in, you know, in chemically speaking, in an oxytocin minute. And that is where I become, uh, really echoing what Elizabeth said, where I become the person who transforms it for myself. So where it shows up is where I stop and I say, oh, wait a minute, oh, this situation is hard. This, this could be anybody, anybody in this situation might find this challenging, this makes, total sense. Okay. Well, now what is it that you need right now? And, and often it's that moment of really asking myself, what can I give to myself that makes that transforms the moment? Such golden nuggets of awareness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I can't, I just can't help myself today. You guys, I'm going to give you a little a peek of this beautiful book cover here, dreaming with bees before we continue this amazing conversation. Um, I loved Daisha's vision for the cover art and, and the whole idea of gosh, what does this even mean? Right. Dreaming with bees. So you all will get to find out very soon. Um, and a, thank you to our cover designer to uh, Mr. Dino Marino for these beautiful book covers. So Jill, I'm going to hang out with you for just a second for this next question. Um, many people in our community talk about finding the opportunity or purpose in the middle of their pain. How has that idea helped you or not? Yes. So thank you for asking that question. So for me, pain is where, where something is not in flow. It, to me, I use pain when I met my most aware. Um, I use pain as a signal for something that is asking for my attention, whether it's literally a physical pain or a pain of the heart or of the emotion. And I love to, um, again, not to, not to spoil the book, but I love to do an inner dialogue with myself. So I actually use pain when it shows up as, as a, a part of me. And I ask it, oh, hello, why are you here? You must be here for a reason. Tell me what it is that you would like me to know. And I have found it as a tool that springs board me, springs board me, spring boards me, there it is, into, uh, into a shift of, of understanding, of, of, a, of, of feeling, allows me to access something else that I, that I was resisting or that was standing in my way. I love the, uh, I love talking about this because it can be a life-changing moment for people to wake up inside of something that uh, they have put some meaning to as bad, you know, and shift it like that. And the awareness, the mindset that you're talking about, um, yeah, that's, that can be other level, other level change making, which is what I love about all of you in this book and, and what we're doing with this book, Elizabeth, how would you answer that? So, you know, we, we talk about this, finding the opportunities in, in these hardest moments sometimes like how the heck do we do that has that idea helped you Laura I also really love this question because it comes up in my work all the time and is my in my personal work too pain is 
so uncomfortable. So we have to acknowledge that. And it's your biggest invitation forward into a place that you've never known. Pain is the play. It, it is the energy that's going to invite you into deeper crevices of yourself that you've never explored before. And so that is the, that's the why that we get to explore deeper into ourselves and maybe unlock things that we wouldn't have unlocked otherwise. I give my clients a metaphor to hope to make the work a little bit less scary. I say, you know, say you have a house and you have this attic that's just full of boxes and you don't know what's in the boxes, it, but you, you might be starting to see cracks in the ceiling and, you know, maybe some mold and you know, it's because there's stuff in the attic. Now, is it it is not fun to go through that attic. Um, there are corners of the attic you've never been through. There's cobwebs. What's in the cobwebs? I don't know. So we go one step at a time, one box at a time, one little thing at a time. And you might find that you become empowered through it, that yes, I can go through my attic. Yes, I can go through these boxes one by one. Maybe it's not as scary and painful as you thought. And then before you know it, you've got a nice clean space. Your house is healthier. And you did it. So, but we, we can't do that. We can't discover all these corners of ourself and our psyche and our body without going through the pain. That's a really good reminder. Oh, the attic ladies, the <laughs> attic. I need to get to my attic. Yeah. All right. Oh my goodness. Um, Thank you both so much, um, Jill, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for what you do in the world. And thank you both so much for being here to share it with everyone. Thanks, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. So if you haven't gathered, this is way more than a book. Um, this is the most generous community so scroll down to the show notes. If something that we talked about today is giving you the goosebumps, you have a question or you want to reach out with, you know, to get support. Um, these ladies are hooked up with their websites and links and you can go explore all of the amazing things that they are up to. You're also invited to join us for our book launch party. We have a private Zoom party on May 23rd. The information is down below for that. We're going to be gathering with all of the Dreaming with Bees authors and doing some fun giveaways that day. So scroll on down for the invite. And if you happen to be listening to this interview anytime after that date, time to hop over to Amazon and grab your copy of this amazing book. Lastly, everyone, remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. <laughs>